Hello and welcome to the Soul Iluna Inspirations. Today we're going to be sharing some information about the Scorpio full moon lunar eclipse coming up on Friday, May 5th, 2023. It's going to be in the morning at 1034 in Pacific Standard Time. And we've called it turning the page as we look at the chart. Hmm. Yo. MC Starman with Diana Robinson here. Hello. We're doing it. Wow. Mercury retrograde, Scorpio full moon, lunar eclipse, that Pluto moving retrograde, uh, all kinds of interesting things. We want to welcome everybody and um, pick a card, any card. All right, best card for this chart in this video. Okay, oh. perfect. So, Blinded, surrounded swords. by swords. The Eight of Swords, a troublesome card. It's like they're exiled from the castle. Exiled from the castles or... Feet in water, she's all tied up. So, yeah, it kind of feels like me uh, right now and feels um, been uh, quite um, interesting. So, where does we start? We start with Mercury retrograde, hey? Yep. So, Mercury retrograde, Mercury now is just passing the conjunction with the sun. So we have a sun moon opposition in Scorpio. And so no. the earth gets in the way of the sun that lights up the moon. And so then we're going to, some parts of the world are at what time? 10, 10 o'clock for us? 10 34. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't think it's visible for us, huh? I don't think so, no. Um, and then. Then we have a Mercury retrograde, and then we have Uranus forming kind of this intense polarity um, with the Scorpio. And then we talked about eclipse seasons, how they force us to really check in deeply. And our Mercury retrograde also uh, makes us check in deeply. And then in the Mercury retrograde, the conjunction of Mercury and the sun is a really key point. So this full moon eclipse is preceded by Mercury conjunction the sun. And that is usually what we call the combustion, makes it very difficult to think. So then this card, uh, blindfolded, and we call uh, blindfolded, surrounded by swords, you know, eight of sword is the the earth, uh, air element, and so the air element were uh, were worried a lot about a lot of different things, and were challenged, and the times are challenged, and I think a lot of us are having to turn the page. Huh? There are some things um, that have to be let go. So let's look at the chart. Yeah, that's where the juicy is. Thanks for bearing with us here as I navigate. Okay. So Friday at 10, oh, it's at 10.34 a.m. That's why it's not going to be uh, see, visible here because it actually happens during the day. So it will be where the night is. Uh, so it'll be uh, in Europe or something. So Sun, Mercury, retrograde, Uranus, conjunction, and Taurus. And so that's there's a sandwich between the universal mind and the personal mind forming this opposition to moon and in, in Scorpio. What's moon and Scorpio feel like to you? Moon and Scorpio. So the moon, our home, our inner world, our feminine, uh, Scorpio intensity, the depths of the personality, the depths of how we're all connected. Also the depths of that maybe which we don't want to see. I, I see it shining a light on the the personal and the collective mind. The the um the Taurus 
Pluto, I mean, Taurus, Scorpio axis. Taurus is about making everything stable in the material world. It's an earth sign, it's v, you know, ruled by Venus. And so, you know, it's all about the body and being secure and being safe. And then it's in opposition to Scorpio, which is about death and letting go and surrendering to um, inner need for transformation. And, and so then that polarity, Taurus, Scorpio, never an easy one. So with, you know, with Uranus and Scorpio, the ground is shaking, Mercury retrograde, really slow, difficult communication that are painstaking. Uh, Sun and Taurus, you know, we really want to have you know good ground and good beauty but uh you know our minds are troubled um the world is troubled and then the moon in scorpio is like there's something dying so all this leads you know the mercury retrograde and the eclipse it's kind of a let's turn the page you know it's time to let go of some things get prepared for because any death gives room for rebirth right definitely is that how you're feeling it i that i love that that last three minutes of you diving into that that uh, or maybe not three minutes but it um it summed up what i've seen collectively a lot i'm feeling a lot right now my personal chart's really affected by it too um mm. i feel like on a personal note and, and collectively i see of that which needs to there's like this feeling of like too much or something's got to pour off the top or fall at the bottom like a need for letting go and yet I'm not sure personally fully what that is in my life yet but I've been playing yeah. a lot with the quest for meaning hmm. how you know and then and, and then a little t-square the Pluto which when you say meaning I just think of Pluto yes yes well so if we you know we're recording this on the 28th yeah. and so the as we're recording this, the moon is in opposition to Pluto and square to the sun forming a T-square sun, moon, Pluto with Mercury, with Uranus. And so, and then we're going to see by the next um, uh, a, full, a new moon, we're going to see Pluto in opposition to Mars, and then we're going to see Mer uh, Venus in opposition to Pluto, and we're going to see Mercury in opposition to Pluto. Um, so Pluto, and then Pluto just turned retrograde. So what does that mean? So so for those who've been following our work, we did a, a, a video on Pluto and Aquarius. And so to me, Pluto and Aquarius is about what does it all mean? You know, why are we really living the way we are? What is the meaning of our lives, you know? And is there really no meaning but consumerism and materialism? I think that that's really at the bottom line of all the crisis we're going through is that if we have no meaning to our life, we feel very empty. And so Pluto and Aquarius, now Pluto came into Aquarius, and now it's backing track and coming back into Scorpio, into Capricorn. And so then this, uh, you know, this, this, this return back into Capricorn. And then at the end of the year, it's going to go back again to into Aquarius, then it's going to go back into Capricorn. And then finally, by the end of 2024, beginning of 2025, Pluto will be into Aquarius for good. So this, this, this crisis for meaning and this Aquarian crisis, that Pluto retrograde really putting, and because Pluto is so in touch with everything. And I know for us, the last three days have been really intense in our family. And um, and so when the crisis hit in our family, I looked at it and it was the moon in opposition to Pluto directly. And now we have moon, sun, Mercury opposition, uh, T-square Pluto. And then we're going to see 
a lot more of that Pluto energy. Also, soon um, Saturn will turn retrograde, but not for a while still. And that's another factor. What else do we have in the chart? Yeah. Or do we do we have any questions? Um, Flesh some of that stuff out. Yeah, questions. I. Hmm. When you say meaning, when you're talking about the meaning a lot, I feel like one of the, because I think we all go through these energies in our own personal way, but on a collective level, there's a, I mean, this is the collective force and it's pushing us individually. And this Mercury, I just, what your thoughts are, I guess, on the Mercury and Venus mutual reception, because Venus rules Taurus and there's so much happening in Taurus right now, but it's all kind of pushing these, what you were saying, like these thought processes and these new ways of thinking and finding meaning but that it does this like i see this ebb and flow between meaning and values well and how to communicate it and that's the difficult thing you know it's like we're seeking for meaning but mercury is retrograde and then as we're speaking mercury is in conjunction with the sun you know just entering that conjunction with the sun in forming that t square with pluto and the moon you know so, so it's like you know, and, and especially when the Mercury is in conjunction with the sun, it's this, uh, it is, uh, it is this uh, combustion that happens where we can't really think straight. We want clarity, but we can't think straight, you know? So that's, you know, really perfect, the eight of sword, you know? It's like, we want clarity, but we we're, we're tied up and we're bound and we can't see, you know? And so it's kind of like, but that's how Mercury retrograde works, right? It puts, it it tricks us into paying attention to what's important by throwing us in the state of not knowing. Mm -hmm. By not knowing, we want to know. Mm -hmm. So that a lot of the times, the not understanding the meaning of our lives forces us to do the work to figure out what the meaning of our world, wild, you know, world is in our life. So in that sense, this Mercury retrograde is kind of tricking us into realizing that, oh, maybe our foundation, maybe our foundation Taurus is not that strong and maybe it's time to let go of something and turn the page, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and like that. Does that make sense? It does. Yeah. What else here? Venus Neptune square is coming up. Venus Neptune square that's you know that's really creative and beautiful especially you know and you know from Gemini to Pisces you know so that's like communicative poetry good time to write and it's interesting and like that. These communications with like this um value and Venus and then Mercury and then we see again the connection between its lower and higher octave so Mercury's the lower octave of the mind and then Uranus being the collective octave and higher octave of the mind versus Venus being the personal relationships and personal values and personal love. And then Neptune being the collective love and the, uh, how do I say this? Unconditional love. Universal love or, yeah. you know, or, or transcendent love. Both activated. <laughs> yeah, no, this is, uh, um, well, and, and uh, you know, Venus, Mercury, mutual reception is still going on, you know, so then really that relationship with Mercury and Venus ruling the chart, ruling the moon, it's really, also it's interesting too, Mars, Moon are also in mutual uh, uh, reception. Oh, yeah. So then, uh, then that, you know, that, that facing of the darkness and then Mars-Pluto opposition, you know, so and that we're going to get to see that. So that's the next thing is Mars, Jupiter, Pluto, T-square. And uh, that's going to be exact on May 21st. So my sense is that uh, there's going to be a lot of energy being released in the collective with Mars and Jupiter and Pluto, you know, so that sometimes not having meaning forces us to find meaning, you know, and sometimes that meaning is put in front of us through crisis, you know, and so Mar Mars, Jupiter, Pluto, to me, you know, there's a certain chaos to it all that's going to be unleashed on all of us. And so we're going to be experiencing that 
at this lunar eclipse. It's kind of a preview of coming attraction. But see, now Mars is at the end of Cancer, and then Pluto is right, you know, at one degree, you know, so then... So, so then as Mars comes into Leo, you know, Mars in the Leo is very fiery in opposition to Pluto. And then Jupiter will be entering into Taurus for an exact T-square. And so that's going to be fascinating. One step at a time. Yeah. <laughs> we're going to talk about it. And yes, I think that right now, like really making sure we're resourced and mm -hmm. taken care of and and like let go of what really is no longer serve you time to turn the page on a few things you know like okay this isn't working you know so what will work mm -hmm. and and then use the jupiter mars pluto energy to give birth to whatever that is that you need to invite into your life so it's a very super you know manifesting kind of energy mars pluto jupiter you know it's like the great mother pluto Jupiter, hope and faith in the great wise teacher, and Mars, the hero, and Mars, Jupiter, in angle, whenever you see it in the chart, in the natal chart for an individual, you say, you know, something like uh, captain of the team, huh? If you have a Mars, Jupiter conjunction or a Mars, Jupiter square, you have leadership qualities, you know, so there's tremendous amount of needing to like find the meaning of my life and be the leader that I'm waiting for, because it's certainly not coming from anybody else, you know? And so I think that that, you know, makes for some very interesting thoughts. Mm -hmm. Well, intense times ahead. Mm -hmm. Let's look at the important dates. Okay. Ooh. Okay. 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 I have no idea. Here we go. Okay. Here so... The first Pluto Mars retrograde, Venus Neptune square on the fourth. On the fourth, and then May the, the okay, and then um, and do you know the date for Mercury conjunct the Sun? We didn't oh, put that. No, we didn't. I can look that up though. Real quick, yeah, that's going to be really important. And then Venus ingress, and then Sun conjunct Uranus. Then the Mars Jupiter opposition tightens on the 15th, but it goes to the 21st. Sun conjunct Mercury retrograde is on the first as well. On the first as well. So then that's Sunday, huh? So this Monday. weekend, Monday. Monday will be a packed day. So we're looking at a pretty intense week, I think, and leading to this full moon. And then things will get pretty energetic after that with that Mars, Jupiter, Pluto. And uh, Mercury turns direct on the 14th. And, and then we'll have this uh, Mercury-Uranus conjunction coming up for the next new moon. So that's all, you know, kind of uh, something to pay attention to. Um, <laughs> go ahead. You have some medicines to, um, yeah, bringing it back into our body, Taurus, staying grounded in this, um, trying time. I think that this next week ahead is gonna likely bring up a lot of emotions for people. There's a lot with the Mars and Cancer and all this Taurus energy being triggered by the moon and Scorpio. Um, I see a potential for a lot of emotions, so. Stay present with yourselves. Um, coming back into Taurus and where it shows up in the body, it rules the throat and the neck, as well as your ears, lower jaw, liver, and gallbladder. And the tissue salt that it's correlated to is number 11, which is nat salt. It's also known as the water eliminator. And it helps to move impurities out of the body and also helps um, move impurities out of the body through the internal yet outside aspect of the body, which is our digestive system. So it's su it supports the liver function, the gallbladder and the bile duct working efficiently, um, the pancreas and then the intestines moving along, helping really make sure the elimination from the inside is happening. Um, and then herbs that really support Taurus and the Taurus energy is sage, helping to move stagnation, time, 
Irva Ursi and Cleavers is my new favorite one for, for our season. Um, Taurus can be very, it's a fixed earth sign, so it can be very stagnant and it has this ability to let us get to a very stagnant place and that's when we can see excess happen or buildups happen and so to keep things moving so that I mean life is movement and constant change so to allow that life force to continuously hit all of our cells it's really important this time of year to make sure we stay either physically in movement or at least be aiding in tools and nourishing our body and things that keep stagnation from occurring. Interesting how you're saying about stagnation in doors but it's also the fertile ground in which life starts emerging you know from that stagnation mm -hmm. the seeds sprout so it's also a very fertile time i think of when you said that i just pictured like fish swimming and salmon and if it was rushing too much then it wouldn't be able to fertilize but as long as the river or wherever is trying to be fertilized has enough stagnation that's what it takes to be fertilized it's a delicate balance everything is balanced and then you got Scorpio, which is definitely delicate balance. <laughs> Coming back to balance, so the opposite of Taurus uh, in the polarity there is Scorpio. Um, Scorpio governs the reproductive organs, back to fert fer fertility. Well, it's also a very interesting huh? because uh, Taurus and Scorpio are the two signs associated with sexuality. And, and, and you know, and Scorpio is so much about death and rebirth. And and sexuality is how we move from 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 death to rebirth, right? That's mm -hmm. the procreative process. So every death is followed by a rebirth, and so in that sense, the, the you know Scorpio rules that process of transformation of rebirth from death, and so that's that turning of the page that we talked about. Yeah, again, I love that. Mm -hmm. It comes, come, keeps coming back. That was a good title. It was a good title. Good listening in. The tissue salt that's correlated with Scorpio is number three, calcium. So this tissue salt helps things leave, again, leave the body, change, but through more of our um, waterways and our skin. And so it's called the blood cleanser. It's going from in the body out versus uh, the Taurus was a little bit more technically the digestive system is outside the body because it's like an open tube throughout the whole body versus Scorpio would be what was already in the body and helping that get out so it's really good for cleaning the blood which can look like um, clearing impurities which would lead to infections boils acne abscesses pimples cradle cap all those things are signs that the blood is having a hard time um, it's also found in our skin and blood naturally this tissue salt uh, so when it's in deficiency, you'll see these kind of health ailments or health uh, imbalances occur. And for the herbal component, Scorpio um, rules herbs which are cleansing and antiseptic. So often to clear impurities again, um, they help do that through the bladder and intestines and skin. And the plants that are most associated that I've come to so far is blackberry, blessed thistle, horseradish, flax, leeks, wormwood, and sarsaparilla. So these are all really good at um, that which is not welcome, eliminating it. So back to that moving chorus is really important on some levels to be grounded and pace yourself. But when it's going too slow, the Scorpio would be the counterbalance and these herbs are things that will really move things along. So these things are also a bit of diuretics. They tighten up the system and a lot of these things are also um, antiparasitic. So if there is um, unwelcome guests living about, then it will help to remove them and make the environment inhospitable. <laughs> help the body turn the page. Yeah, exactly. Uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> Love it. So, so then this turning of the page theme, mm -hmm. this uh, this reflecting for meaning, you know, finding meaning, and then leading as the changes, the full moon, the eclipse comes. Uh, and then Mercury will turn direct. And then as we move towards the next new moon, then there's going to be that Mars Jupiter energy of finding leadership and, and of really becoming the hero you've been looking for. And so this, this gestation period, this full moon, it's a really good time to like really reflect on what's going on and 
don't expect clarity right away, you know. Don't expect it, you know, till for a while still. But know that clarity may not be there, but uh, you have to listen for it. You have to prepare yourself for it. You have to do the things that make you available for divine guidance. I was thinking, you know, Mercury retrograde and and the role of Mercury. And um, we're reading the um, the Odyssey. Hmm. So in the Odyssey, when Odysseus is trying to free um, his men that have been turned into pigs by Circe, Right? I forgot. Yeah. Hermes, Mercury comes to him and gives him a medicine so that he can be protected against the magic of Circe. Hmm. And Hermes tells Odysseus exactly how to deal with Circe, the enchantress, so that he can free his men and free himself and so then that's the role of mercury so mercury retrograde even though it's just really difficult and if you know there's no clarity if we pray to mercury if we do our diligence then the magic potion that will protect us from the enchantress and will help us free um, uh, you know our, our our friends from illusion you know and so this is i thought that was a beautiful way of seeing because mercury is associated with virgo right the medicines mm -hmm. and so virgo uh, mercury rules the, the you know the healing process and so in that sense mercury retrograde is also a chance for me to look at where i can get the magic potion to protect me from the illusions of the world that we live in mm. That was nice, huh? Yeah, it was good. Yeah, this Mercury retrograde in Taurus, it just feels like really pacing my mind and taking space to witness my mind and where I go. Well, and Mercury I'm Mercury in Taurus has a bad reputation, right? It's a slow-witted individual. You I know? didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh -huh. like, a, you know, like a cows, you know, you know, they're not too small, Makes they sense. don't move too quickly, you know, yeah. and, you know, and the bull just sees red and that's it, man, you can't think about it, you know, it's not really a very good placement, it's a great placement for a singing voice, it's a great, beautiful, but it's kind of like, oh, everything is so beautiful, you know, I, I can't really think straight, you know, so then it's, it's, you know, so yeah, that's an interesting so it no feels like being that. in nature right now. I'm so blinded by all the beauty. I just kind of, my thought process is feeling simpler, taking it all in. Oh, I think for me, it's been the, the, the Farming, being able to planting. work in the garden, you know, working three, four hours a day in the garden every day, kind of like, oh, you know, grinding myself into and letting this storm pass. So go ahead just bringing one last thing is that this is going to be on the fifth on friday next week which is this full moon but then only a couple days later venus will switch into cancer and so it's likely to come with maybe a, an emotional uh whiplash after the fact after that mercury is not so exalted and Mer yeah i guess um venus and mars will both be in cancer for a while there probably about a week or two well, and also right now, you know, Venus is so bright in the sky, you know, she's yeah. in her, she's mm -hmm. in her full glory that the brightest she comes, right? And then she will come into Cancer and then as she comes into Leo, then we have the Venus retrograde phase where Venus will come back and then she will make three oppositions to Pluto during that time. So... Uh, you know, we're going to be looking at that as well. There's a lot going on for this particular full moon. Don't expect clarity, but nurture yourself and turn the page on what doesn't serve you and pray for guidance to get the clarity that you need. Good time to uh, reach out for an astrologer or a herbalist. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and um, I think that one of the things, you know, in terms of meaning that comes back really important 
it's uh, you either lead, you follow, or you get out of the way. These are times for energetic action, but one has to be well prepared for those energetic action, which will be manifested by that Jupiter, Mars, Pluto, T square. So this is a preparation time. Um, and look for the inner leader within you and uh, don't be afraid to shine your light. Mm. I'm MC Starman. This is Diana Robinson. Uh, and uh, we are so grateful that you're supporting our channel. We're up to 560 subscribers. Ooh. We've been like getting about 20 new subscribers every month. It's been really exciting. Almost uh, over 100 uh, just this year so far. So please pass uh, these videos on to your friends, uh, comment, ask questions. And um, our work is supported by... Uh, by the readings that we do. So if you want to um, support us, uh, uh, reach out for a reading. So much love. Over and out. Happy Be turning good. the page. Whoop, whoop, whoop.